Hello everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar, Five Ways to Benchmark Your Programs with Data Now. On the line, we have Michael Rochelle, Chief Strategy Officer and Principal HCM Analyst for Brandon Hall Group. Before we get into the webinar, just a bit about Brandon Hall Group. Brandon Hall Group is a research and analyst firm that empowers excellence in organizations around the world through our research and tools. Our vision is to inspire a better workplace experience. We have world-class research, data, and expertise across all areas of human capital management. Currently, we have open surveys and training benchmarking, succession management, hiring and internal mobility, talent acquisition analytics. We would love to hear from you. In exchange, you could receive free gift cards, research, reports, and more. To participate, please visit our website, brandonhall.com, and click on Open Surveys. Today, we'll be talking a little bit about data now as an overview, as well as go through use cases and how you could benchmark your budget, compare against future trends, your department, your organization, as well as create next steps to improve your benchmark rating. Michael, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, David. So what you're looking at here is the template or faceplate for data now, and it's organized around our five practice areas, learning and development, leadership development, talent management, talent acquisition, HR workforce management. We are the leading provider of research and analytics in the HCM space, and that is reflected in, in a very robust research agenda throughout the year. And data now is driven by the survey data that we collect from that research agenda. And as you mouse over each area, you can see the level of depth that we go into under each practice area. So before we even write the first piece of research about a particular area, the survey data is available to you in the raw form based on how it was asked so that you can use it as a benchmarking tool within your organization. And as David pointed out earlier, we're gonna take you through five basic examples of how to do that. But first, let's explore a little bit more about how data now works. So I'm just gonna pick a study here under learning and development, compliance training. And every study that you look at in data now, if you're not sure if the study is applicable to the needs that you have, or if you're starting in the right place, you can always start by clicking on study overview. This is a drop down where it quickly gives you a summation of what was the purpose and objectives of the study, key findings from the study, and also a general understanding of the respondents, how many, what countries, industry verticals and such, and at any given time, you can always contact us directly at success at brandonhall.com to receive more details on the respondent base. You also will have a choice immediately to look at the full study results or what we call functional segments. Many of our clients are in a position to look at high consequence industries where many of you out there, approximately one out of two organizations may have a great deal of mandatory or compliance related training, regulatory based, and that sometimes can impact the answers in our studies. And so we call that out. Also for many of you that may be in retail, hotel restaurant management, or other high turnover areas that can also have an impact on the answers. So we also offer a special cut on that. And then finally, for folks that are not in the product selling arena, but are in services selling arena, like consulting firms, banking and others, we also give a special cut for service related companies versus product related companies. So what I'm gonna do now is actually jump into the use cases that David had brought up earlier on the call. Our first is we're gonna be looking at of the overview on benchmarking your budget. So what we've picked here is our HCM technology survey. And what you can see here is on the right hand side is that we can actually scroll through at any given time, the exact questions that were asked in the survey. So you can immediately move to the question that you believe is most relevant to beginning your benchmarking exercise. Here we have chosen the question, what percentage of your organization's overall HR budget is spent on HCM technology? So if you were finding that question for the first time, you would click on it, it would actually render in front of you in this pie chart diagram. You can also switch formats immediately that if you prefer to look at it in a bar chart format, that's also a chart option. But we're gonna just stick with the bar chart and we're just gonna talk about how you can use this to kind of figure out where you belong in your HCM technology budget expenditure. 
So let's say, for example, we come down to the legend at the bottom. You can see it's broken out in 15 to 20% increments. Let's say for sake of argument that you're an organization that spends about 35% of your total budget on ATM technology, and you'd like to understand what percentage of people spend above and below. Well, the first way you can do that is just by mousing over every section. It gives you a quick outline of what was the respondent group percentage of the whole, in this case, 165 respondents for this particular question, and how that breaks out around the, the pie chart. However, with our interactive legend, if you wanna just do a quick comparison of the folks that spend as much as you do, and the percentage of people that spend more than you do, by simply taking out the areas of the legend that you'd like to remove, you can actually now focus in. And in this example, we can see that approximately 9%, or maybe just under one out of 10 companies spend as much as you do on HCM technology. And you can quickly see that a little over 5% of companies spend more than you do. And then you can see the quick breakout that here, this is about 41 to 50%, and then about 3% spend 50% or more of their budget on HCM technology. So very quick snapshot. If that's the snapshot you're looking for, we have an export button where you just come up here, you pick the file format that you'd like. I'm just gonna pick JPEG. And now I have a presentation quality download of that snapshot that goes into your download folder on your computer and immediately ready for any presentation or any report that you're putting together. The nice part about this is that we can reset and we can say now we'd like to get a snapshot of the folks that spend less than you do. So we can take out the top half and now we have the other snapshot. So let's kind of GPS into where we were. We're at that 31 to 40%. Now that we can see that approximately 24% of respondents spend about 21 to 30% and around the pie chart is easily laid out. We can now go in, export that. And now we actually have a very nice side-by-side -side comparison that we can look at right on our computer screen, or we're now building out a very nice PowerPoint presentation with stepping through your particular cuts. So it's very easy, as you can see, to immediately begin benchmarking, doing custom cuts, just on the data itself, based on the answer array that we gave to our respondents. But there's actually more. If you come over to the left-hand side, we offer various filters. Every study will have its own set of filters, and that's based on our criteria for what are the most relevant filters for each study. Not every study will have all filters, but it will also have the most relevant. So here we can say, well, this is the full respondent pool, but how do companies answer this question based on maybe employee size? So let's just take a look at if there's any big differences, and let's focus in on where we were before. So let's kind of take out and just say, you know what, we only want to look at how many large companies, because I'm a fairly large company, say, 9% of the total study says that we spend the same amount we do. Well, let's see what happens if we just look at large companies. So we click large companies, we hit submit, we come back, we take out the answers, And what's interesting is, is that large companies actually spend roughly the same amount on their ACM technology as the entire study group. We can quickly reset and say, well, let's go to the other end of the spectrum and see if that makes a difference on spending habits. So now we take out the answers. We're studying in our group. And now you can see there's a significant difference. In large companies, large companies are spending at a rate that's five times greater in this percentage of HR budget than small companies. So clearly there's a trend here that smaller companies have a tendency to spend less, but let's see how much less. So what is the big number for them? So as we slowly bring back each section, we can begin to see where they fall. And what's really interesting is that with small companies, and again, employee sizes one to roughly 500, 61% of those small companies spend less than 15% of their HR budget on technology. As, and let's just make that very clear by just taking out all that. And you can see that very succinctly. And again, we can snapshot that as well. We can also do revenue. 
by employee size, revenue, and in this example, also rest of the world, difference between North America and rest of the world. So it's a really nice tool to be able, as you can see, you're never, as I say, you're never two clicks away from finding out what you need and what's important to you. So that's our first use case. David, any commentary on that or anything that you'd like to add? Michael, for this particular study, it'd be great to also look at the pie chart, or sorry, the bar chart option. Sure. So let's go back, reset our filters. And quickly with one touch, we can take this exact question and we can switch to the, the chart option. And now the exact same question is in a horizontal chart format. And there's no interactive legend because now we're breaking out each individual area separately. And that just allows for a more interesting or more relevant presentation style that you may have within your organization. That's a great ad, Dave, thanks. So the next use case that we were gonna look at was the area around comparing against future trends. So let's go to that. So we picked our HCM Outlook study. And this is where we see key trends within human capital management. And we always ask the question, what are the forward looking business priorities for organizations? And that's the question that we picked. Which of the following best describes your company's top three business priorities? So again, these are the actual answers that our respondents had to choose from. Pretty robust list. But you can instantly see graphically what are the top choices? So you can see here developing new products and services. Approximately four out of 10 companies, two out of five companies said that's a big priority for them. Gaining market share led the pack at 43%, almost one out of two companies. Improving customer experience and driving innovation. Again, this is our full respondent group. Let's try something a little bit interesting. David. Let's instead of using the filters on the left-hand side, let's see if there's a big difference in industries. So this is the full study, and let's remember these numbers and to remind ourselves, let's just take a quick snapshot of this. So now we instantly have that. And let's go from the full study group, and let's see if changes take place when we look at high consequence industries. So now you can see there is a significant change there. Okay, so now we have the high consequence sector up, but let's go back now and compare what we saw in the full study. So I'm going to go over to my folder here, pull up the chart that we had for the top three business priorities for everybody. And now we can see the comparative data. So previously we had 24.5% for developing new products or services. Here we can see it was 38.7% for the study group as a whole. So it's not nearly as big a priority for high consequence. Let's take a look at gaining new market share. About a third less of companies in high consequence could gain market share versus the full study group. Let's take a look at improving customer experience, which is another big one. That seems to be the same, 49 versus 40. 0.3%. So where is high consequence pushing their priorities? Driving innovation, gaining the, creating the right organizational culture, those seem to be big pushes for that group. And you can see here as well, that's, that's common as well for the group as a whole. So it allows you to be able to see the subtle differences sometimes, but sometimes dramatic differences between studies that we do based on these functional segments. Okay, so now we're going to our third use case, which is benchmark your department. So we decided to look at learning content and look at the behaviors of how other learning departments handle their learning content. So where you can see here immediately is what percentage of companies and how much of they actually outsourcing learning content, which is purchase off the shelf how much it was being created in-house, outsourced but done in a custom format, using content aggregators in order to be able to just go shopping for content, and then actually relying on MOOCs, which is becoming one of the newer trends and offering to large audiences a lot of content. 
So again, with the interactive legend, we can actually benchmark ourselves and pick any one of these numbers and basically say, okay, I spend about and send out about and react to about half of my content being done in-house versus out. How many other people are just like that? So I can immediately get to that group and I can see that 9.9% .9 of companies are like me as far as purchasing off the shelf content. About 15% of companies are just like me and created in-house content, custom outsource, content aggregation, and MOOCs. So you can see that if I'm doing about half of the content coming from the following sources, if that's me, I'm actually in rare co company because overall only about one out of 10 companies or less are doing it the same way I am. So clearly it makes me think, well, where should I be? Or maybe where I wanna be, where are the big numbers? So let's slowly bring back in. So let's do some big jump. So you can see here by just bringing back in one element and benchmarking myself that most departments are actually doing the only some of this. So which really kind of holds with our other content, learning content strategy percentage, which is about 30% of overall content is being outsourced to be, to, uh, to be done by third-party providers for learning organizations. Okay, let's move to benchmark your organization. So here we're trying to take a, a hot topic that affects an entire organization, which is performance management. The question that we picked here was, which of the following comes closest to describing basically how often do you get into formal performance discussions with your employees? You can see here down at the bottom that we've given different time periods. And again, now we can say, well, how is our organization doing against others? But let's just say that we're really kind of still focusing on the once a year approach. I'd like to see what percentage of companies are becoming more frequent. I hear a lot about daily and monthly, checking in a lot with employees is exceptionally important in driving a lot of engagement and all the great research that, that we put out. I'd like to compare the number of companies that are still doing it like us to the number of companies that are doing more daily and monthly. And with a click of a button, we can take out that. And now we're looking at about 30% of companies are still doing one-time annual discussions. How does that balance with companies that have moved more towards monthly and daily discussions? And you can see about 12% of organizations have moved towards monthly and daily discussions. So what that really tells me is, is that Although it's a, a trend and it's important, less than half of companies have moved to that particular approach compared to companies that are doing annual reviews. So where is the biggest movement taking place? And again, we can click back in, take a look at where people are, are moving to. And it seems like the greatest movement is to move from once a year to twice a year. And second of that is to move from once a year to four times a year. So it clearly allows you to be able to see the trending over time of what companies are doing. And it kind of allows you to GPS in and say, if I were trying to take a logical step within my organization to increase the frequency of performance reviews, I could clearly begin with just moving from twice a year and being maybe even more progressive and moving to quarterly. And although daily and monthly would be great, you know, I can clearly show organization that is the best place to be but that is something I can do over time. Our last one that we're gonna visit is the idea around taking a look at where we can get additional research, creating the next steps to improve your benchmark ranking. This is an example back to our learning content study, where even before we look at the full study, we've already identified assets within the membership center that would be relevant to you to help you gain a greater understanding of the subject of learning content. And so you can see here we have learning content demographics. We also have a learning content survey snapshot, which is a very nice illustrative PDF format that really just encompasses all the information that was actually in the study and putting it at your, at your fingertips. And then finally, any related webinars that we've done by having access to our membership center, you can also come in and take a look at 
the webinar information and the accompanying information that we gave in that webinar for people to have as a takeaway. I really strongly suggest that as you're thinking through data now to begin to join our webinars and have access to this related content. So that's our really our, our quick tour of data now and the elements around data now and how you can use it in several use cases and others to quickly benchmark your organization and your activities against others and figure out what's the new path forward that's best for you. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna turn the webinar back over to David Foer for any closing comments, and thanks everyone. David? Thank you, Michael, for that helpful overview of data now. Thank you all for joining us. You can reach Michael at michael.rochelle at brandonhall.com for any questions that you might have. And as always, you can reach us at success at brandonhall.com. Thank you for joining us.